every mixer talks about wanting their mix to sound glued. Now, when I say the word glue, I bet the first thing that comes to your mind is a mix bus compressor. Well, in this video, you're gonna learn why relying just on a mix bus compressor for glue is actually a mistake and how there are two things that are much more fundamental that if you get them right, your mix is gonna sound a lot more glued even without any mix bus compressor on. I'm gonna let my friend Roloff Klopp explain this to you. Uh, Roloff was once a student of mine and is now the head coach inside my full training program. He's an absolutely amazing mixer and Roloff and I are completely aligned in our engineering philosophy. And you can trust that anything I allow him to say on this channel, I support 100%. And I'm gonna put a link to his Spotify reel down below so you can go ahead and listen to that. And once you do, I trust that you are gonna have no problem wanting to hear his advice. So here's Roloff to teach you how to get more glue in your mix. So I wanna start this video by talking about what is uh, one of the most common issues that we see in the mix reviews, and that is the over compression of the mix bus. Um, and it's most likely caused by one of these two reasons, and it's that people are either trying to make their mixes um, too loud in the mixing stage already, or they're trying to provide um, too much glue in their mixes on uh, the mix bus compression, and they're just overdoing that. Either one of these two. And the last one, the glue one, is most likely due to what's partly a misconception, and that is that most of the glue in your mixes should be coming from the mix bus compression, and that is not at all the case, because most of the glue in your mixes will actually be coming from uh, the, the frequency balance as well as the volume balance. And what I mean by frequency balance in this case is like how you EQ all your instruments so that they have their own place in the mix. And if you do a good job with that, that's gonna provide a lot of glue, as well as just simply where you position the fader and how loud you put something in the mix, that is also going to provide a lot of glue in your mixes um, in like a far more transparent kind of way that any mix bus compressor will ever do. Um, so that, that's what I'm gonna be demonstrating uh, in just a second here. And so I'll be doing that by first showing you how I would compress um, a, a, the mix bus of one of my own mixes here. And then I'll show you how the frequency balance as well as the volume balance uh, contribute to the glue and how messing up one of those two will actually actually uh, make it very hard for you to glue your mixes together. So what I've done here is I have exported some stems from a recent mix that I've worked on um, and there's no mix bus compression on this whatsoever. Um, and they're all routed to this uh, like fake like mix bus over here and I have two different compressors on them, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, one of them is my, my go-to mix bus compressor, which is this FabFilter Pro C2 with a preset. As you will know, there's nothing wrong with using presets every now and then. Um, and this is no exception. So I'm using the hard rock punch glue preset in this case. And so I'm ready to start compressing this mix. And what I usually start with is by making sure that the threshold is at zero so that it's not doing any gain reduction at all as soon as I turn the plugin on um, and just make sure that I really dial it back myself, if that makes any sense. Let's see what this sounds like without compression at all. <laughs> And I will start compressing the mix bus, so I'll throw it on and let's see what this sounds like with a little bit of mix bus compression. Um, this is definitely one of the more subtle compressors um, and I think the best way I can describe what it's doing and what you can be listening for when I AB this is that when the plugin is bypassed it almost sounds like uh, just a bunch of like separate instruments that happen to be in the same room at the same time um, and when we engage the compressor it almost sounds as if they're just very nicely working together like seamlessly being glued together a little bit. Um, let's see if you can hear that when I AB this. <laughs> So it's super subtle compression, right? And it's mostly audible right the millisecond after I turn on the compressor. That's kind of when you kind of hear it 
kick in a little bit. Um, and what it's doing from that moment on is just providing a little bit of like a container of where the mix is allowed to be in. And it's just providing a tiny bit of more consistency in terms of uh, the drum hits and the energy and all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, as you could have seen as well, it is super subtle. It's only doing about 2 dB of gain reduction. And when the mix is dialed in well, this is all that you need. And I will also want to show you an example of what it sounds like when the mix is obviously way over compressed. So I'll just um, show you this with another instance of uh, the Pro C2. And I just dialed in some more aggressive settings and I will see what this sounds like and just really make sure that it's obviously when we're pushing things too hard. Let's, let's see what this sounds like. <laughs> So right there, it already starts to make the mix sound pumpy. And it's just like, you can hear the compressor just working aggressively on this mix already. Specifically on that super big snare hit right there, right? It's like that big hit as well yeah like you can see that it gets slammed down but most importantly you can hear it being slammed down and therefore it, it really starts to sound pumpy and you can really hear uh, the whole mix volume just change all the time and it's just a very non-transparent way of uh, of mix bus compression <laughs> And now again, without compression, it even sounds a lot better, like more open and all of that stuff. And with this compressor on, it just, it sounds super squashed and it pumps and it just, it adds tons of negative side effects. <laughs> crank it up even further then that only get gets more and more and more exaggerated right so uh, this is also good practice by the way to really kind of push your compressor so to the point where you're obviously pushing things too hard that kind of gives you like an idea of what the mix bus compressor is actually sounding like and then you can also dial that in but more subtly one of the reasons why i can get away with such um subtle mix bus compression is because the volume balance as well as the frequency balance are just in a good spot and they provide most of the glue in this mix already um, and they're just far more responsible for the glue than the mix bus compressor will ever be and to really demonstrate that um, I just want to mess around with both the frequency balance as well as the volume balance um, a little bit to show you just how responsible they really are for the glue so let's mess about with the um, volume balance first so let's pretend that this mix had too loud uh, the drums too loud and the guitars just too low in volume so um, let's see what this sounds like just without any mix bus compression whatsoever and then we'll try to kind of fix this by throwing on our mix bus compressor let's see <laughs> Now, right off the bat, this already sounds way less glued together, right? Simply because the drums are poking out of the mix a little bit too much and the guitars are too far to the background, so they're not really any part of the mix anymore at all. Um, so let's see if we can solve that by throwing in um, a mix bus compressor. And I'm loading up a different instance of the same plugin, uh, but simply with some more um, aggressive uh, compression settings to see if we can we can fix this issue let's see so threshold back at zero again let's play and let's dial it back see what what happens <laughs> Now, as you can see, we have to do a lot more gain reduction in order to provide even a little bit of glue. And even then, it doesn't, it still doesn't sound as glued together as the previous version where the volume balance was in a better spot. <laughs> Even if we squash it really hard, then still, it doesn't really sound that nicely glued together. It sounds pumpy, right? You can literally hear the compressor pumping on these drums now. Another example would be, what if we put the vocal too loud? So let's bring the drums back, the guitars back, but the vocal is too loud, it's spoken out of the mix. Let's see what that sounds like with no compression. Of 
again, just less glued simply because of the volume balance being off. Uh, that by itself should tell you a lot, right? Um, so yeah, let's try to solve this by just throwing on our mix bus compressor again. So it's getting us closer for sure. It's like it's taming the vocal and it's putting the vocal back into the mix at least a little bit, but it's by far not as nice sounding as just our um, well dialed in volume balance with our subtle mix bus compression like this one. This is still the most transparent way of mix bus compression and it still sounds the best glued together as well, simply because, again, the volume balance is in a good spot. Now, what about the frequency balance then? How does that impact the glue in this mix? Again, I just want to demonstrate this to you guys, so let's just uh, mess with our frequency balance and see what's happening. So, uh, let's make our drums too bright. Okay, that's definitely too bright. And let's make our guitars too dark, for example. All right, let's see how this is impacting the mix already, just without the mix bus uh, compressor. See, just that already, again, just ruined the mix a little bit, or at least ruined the glue in the mix. Like, things are sounding too separated uh, now. <clears throat> so let's see if our regular mix bus compressor solves this issue. It's definitely gluing the things a little bit more together, but again, just not as transparently as, as it normally would. Uh, let's see how this aggressive compressor is doing now. It almost looks like this compressor actually exaggerates the lack of glue in the mix now. So that is like the opposite of what, what the goal is. Um, so again, let's bypass these plugins. Let's make sure that our frequency balance is in a good spot. Um, and then, yeah, let's listen to this. <laughs> And again, now we just have the subtle, subtle amount of glue that the mix bus compressor is doing. And that's exactly what we're looking for from our mix bus compressor. So again, guys, I just wanted to reiterate that if you're ever um, in a mix and you find yourself um, looking to grab the mix bus compressor and wanting to provide more glue, then it's actually highly likely that there is a problem in one of the earlier stages of the mixes, like the frequency uh, balance, as well as the volume balance. So focus on these two things first, and then make sure at, almost at the end of your mix, uh, make sure that your mix bus compressor is only doing like the last five or ten percent of the actual glue in the mix and uh, don't rely too hard on the mix bus compressor to provide all of the glue because you notice how it just ruins things and doesn't really solve the problems that are easily solved by um, focusing again just on the frequency balance and the volume balance. Mm -hmm.